Hey guys, welcome to another book review. Um, so today I'm going to be sharing, it, it's kind of like a self-help book for lack of a better way to describe it. Um, so definitely out of my norm in regards to what I like to read. Um, and I actually bought this book when I attended my first professional conference, the highlight of adulthood that no one bothers to mention to you. Um, and usually though at conferences there are all kinds of um, guest speakers, motivational speakers, blah blah blah. So this gentleman actually does make his living as a speaker. Um, his book is The Freak Factor and his name is David J. Rindle. And he's actually a pretty dynamic person when you go and hear him talk. He's very good at it, which I'm sure has taken quite a bit of practice over the years. But what he likes to do is he likes to talk about all the qualities that people would regularly give him shit for and how um, he found a way to positively spin them and also find ways to advance his own career. and. That's basically what he did. He took a lot of those negative qualities that employers had deemed not good and he turned them to positives and found a way to start his own business and make a living doing his uh, motivational speeches. Um, there's actually a lot of exercises for you to do in the book. It's a lot about, uh, let's see if I can find one here like positive and negative personality traits and qualities, um, you know, stuff like that. So, see, stuff like that. I did not do any of these activities. However, I do agree with a lot of the stuff he says. Like, for example, if you work at a job where um, you're, you have like an annual review, in some ways the corporation can kind of set your supervisor up for failure and kind of you in a way because there's always a spot where they're like pick qualities that you need to improve upon and put that person on an action plan to improve those qualities but ignore all the stuff that you've done well in the span of that time don't build on the qualities that we already know you have you know build on the ones that you need to improve upon and he talks about how most of the time that's not going to work because you're already wired in a certain way um, so it kind of backfires on you because then you're taking something you're not good at and content like trying to get better at it but most people don't actually get better at it they continue to really suck at it so he said just take the qualities you're already good at and really enhance those because then people are more willing to overlook those traits that they deem negative right so for example in one of his jobs, he talks about how he was basically running everything pretty independently and then they merged with another company. Now he was having to work with a team of people. So he went from being like an independent self-starter and that being a good quality to now it's, oh, you're not a team player because you don't contribute as much in our group, like when we talk or doing presentations, stuff like that. So obviously, you know, in those situations, you kind of can't win. A lot of the stuff is, is based on not just the job, but also the environment, um, stuff like that. And when you're looking at his situation where you were merging into another company, it's kind of a big transition to go from you were working independently to now you're in a team and your work is also the team's work and that's difficult because then you have a lot of dynamics to work through in order to achieve the goals yada 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 right you guys understand what I'm saying um, so he talks a lot about that or he also talks about getting in trouble a lot when he was a little kid in school because he talked a lot and how that was like a regular comment on all of his report cards. He talks too much, he talks too much. And now he's a professional speaker. <laughs> so he found a way to take that quality and turn it into something productive and, and good for him. 
Um, and they're very, there are some sections here where it talks about parenting though. So if you are a parent, this might be helpful for you. If you're um, an independent contractor, gig worker, which I'm pretty sure most people are now, that's becoming the American way, I think. Um, if it's definitely a situation where you're tired of your boss highlighting all of your negative qualities, this book would also probably tell you how to spin it into positives and be like, okay, so I know you said that I'm not as organized as you want me to be. However, because I'm not as organized, I've been able to multitask and that's how I've gotten this, 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 and this done in the day in the frame that you wanted me to get it done. Trade-offs, see? So that's the thing. That's one of the reasons why I did enjoy reading this book. It's very easy to read. He also makes a book um, for kids too, uh, which I also purchased. It's in my house somewhere. Um, and he he's trying to make kids feel okay with the fact that other kids are probably gonna make fun of them or people are gonna judge them or even adults will be like, oh my God, that kid is a high risk for being a juvenile delinquent because he remembers being branded that as a young child and he turned out okay. I mean, there was definitely some bumps in the road, but let's be real, in adulthood, everyone has a few bumps in the road and some of us, well, we're gonna continue to have them pretty much until we die, yeah. I know, not the most happy thing I've ever said, but like you guys watch this stuff expecting me to tell you, you know, tips of joy. I don't know. Um, I would definitely say he is a pretty good writer. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with the fact he's writing about something he clearly loves and it shows through. Um, I would say feel free to check out his book. I think it's helpful and I also do see benefits of it in my life already because um, I'm not known for being incredibly organized but I am incredibly good at multitasking so definitely some some trade-offs or um, you know it's there's definitely like a lot of personality characteristics that he describes and he's just like a lot of people would see this as a negative but because you have this trait that means that you also possess this quality which is helpful in the workforce for you know fill in the blank here and that's always good because again like I said a lot of people and a lot of corporations are trying to force workers and supervisors to focus on where can you improve what take the shit that you suck at and get better at that and he is very firm in the fact that like that's not really possible and the only thing that's going to result in is less productivity the employee being upset the manager being stressed out and shit still not getting done so i think it's kind of an interesting way to look at it. It would be nice if corporate culture would look at things that way. I don't think they're going to because the upside of having employees with shitty self-esteem is that they're not gonna look for another job and leave. Just a thought. Um, but anyway, again, the freak factor. So, till next time.